Hi, my name's Chris. I am a GP working in Australia and today I'm going to be chatting to you about the MTHFR gene. Yeah, it looks like a swear word. And to be honest with you, amongst colleagues, we actually call it the mother effer gene. So I may refer to it as that during, I guess, this video, but please know I'm not meaning to offend anyone. We actually all have this gene, so I'm not trying to peeve anyone off by calling it the mother effer gene. Just be aware, that's what it's called amongst a lot of medical professionals because of what it looks like. Let's be real. So quite often I'll have alternative medical practitioners ask patients to ask me to order a test for them involving the mother effer gene. This is looking for mutations in the gene and honestly my answer 99% of the time is no. And I want to explain why. It's not out of any disrespect to our alternative health colleagues, not by any means, but because there's a lack of evidence behind it, which I will jump into. So what is the MTHFR gene? <laughs> well, I'm going to call it the mother effer gene, but it does have a proper name. I'm going to read it out. It's the methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase gene. What this does is it produces the gene methyl tetrahydrofolate, which plays a role in making amino acids, which are the building blocks for protein within our bodies. So one can understand the importance of having this gene. Specifically, the MTHFR gene is essential for the creation of folate within our bodies. Folate, of course, is a B vitamin, B6 to be exact, and it's a necessary nutrient for the formation of several things, namely our neurological system, especially when we are developing as a fetus. It's also really important at preventing issues such as digestive issues, anemia, tongue issues such as glossitis, poor growth and gastrointestinal distress. The test, however, as I alluded to, the MTHFR gene test, is not actually for the gene itself, but it's for mutations within the genes. These mutations are often called polymorphisms, and there are two main polymorphisms that the MTHFR gene test looks for. Fun fact, up to 70% of the population actually has a mutation in their mother effer gene. 70%. So there's a good chance that you watching this may actually have a mutation in your mother effigene. And don't, don't rush off just yet to get tested, let me explain. What's important to note is that the mutation does not cause disease. If anything, there's only a very, very mild impact in the formation of folate within your own body because of a mutation in this gene. One mutation, the 677C2T gene polymorphism, if you're homozygous, may cause a mild homocysteinuria, that is a higher level of homocysteine in your bloodstream. Homocysteine is another amino acid, so you can imagine why they're linked. There is really no evidence at the moment that a very mild increase in homocysteine in your system causes any significant distress or pathology. However, in those who have less than 20% of their MTHFR gene that works, they will have significant homocysteinuria. This is actually significant because it does prelude a lot of conditions such as cardiovascular disease, neurological defects, psychological defects, and changes in your movement such as your walk or your gait. This, however, is not caused by a mutation in the MTHFR gene specifically not one that we look for anyway. Importantly, there are lots of causes for high homocysteine and a reduction in the ability to process it, such as underactive thyroid or hypothyroidism, diabetes, hypercholesterolemia or high cholesterol, obesity, and some medications. So the main concern about the MTHFR gene and testing it is around folate and folate's actions on the body. Of course, the most studied area regarding this is in pregnancy, when you're forming the neural tube or the brain and spine of the developing fetus. This is why doctors suggest that you take 400 micrograms of folate as a supplement before you fall pregnant and for the first trimester or the first three months of your pregnancy. Note that this, it doesn't matter if you've got an MTHFR gene mutation, if you've got a diet high in folate, we want you to supplement anyway, because we know that 400 micrograms of supplementation meets your minimum requirements. It doesn't discriminate about whether or not you've got a low folate diet or different, I guess, other comorbidities or diseases in your body. 
and it means that we're hitting that minimum so your baby will develop healthily. It doesn't matter if you've got an empty HFR gene mutation or polymorphism because we're still going to recommend the same amount of folate anyway. So logically, my reasoning here is why would I test you for something to find out if something's wrong when really it doesn't change what I do, what you should do, or how you're going to live the rest of your life. So if evidence suggests that there is a rate of about 70% of us who have an empty HFR gene polymorphism, and the risk of a neural tube defect is one in a thousand, statistically that doesn't really line up. You would imagine it would be 70 in 100 or 7 in 10 births because 7 in 10 of us have a mutation. So you can see there's not really a causative link there or any correlation. It's really coincidence. There hasn't been enough studies as of yet looking into the environmental factors, especially folate supplementation in those who do have the 677C2T gene mutation, who theoretically may have an increased risk of neural tube defects because they, I guess, theoretically have a very mild reduction in the internal folate that they're producing. So at the moment, I wouldn't test someone who is wanting to fall pregnant for the MTHFR gene or its uh, polymorphisms because it's not going to change what I suggest and it's not going to change your risk through pregnancy. So it's just an expensive test for no benefit. So that's pregnancy and neural tube defects. I did allude to the fact that folate also plays a major role in other areas of our health and development. So alternative health practitioners often propose that knowing your MTHFR gene uh, polymorphism status means that you're at increased or decreased risk of things like clotting disorders or thrombophilia that you're increased risk of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and a whole host of other pathologies. With regards to clotting, there has been studies done and there is no causative link to say that if you've got a polymorphism, you're going to have an increased risk or decreased risk of clotting. There's also evidence that supplementing with folate doesn't change your clotting risk anyway, regardless of your gene status. Whilst I agree, and there is certainly evidence, that high homocysteine does have an increased risk of cardiovascular disease, as I've already talked about, there is no evidence that that high homocysteine is always from an NTHFR gene polymorphism. There's a whole other load of factors that can cause that. And again, there's no evidence that folate supplementation, if theoretically it was an NTHFR gene polymorphism, causing your high homocysteine levels, uh, can actually help. So to summarize that sentence, because that was long, doesn't matter if it's an empty HFR thing, if you've got high homocysteine, taking extra folate doesn't change your cardiovascular risks. See, once upon a time, we thought that the uh, correlation between homocysteine and heart disease was really, really strong, but we've come to find it's not as strong as we used to be, or it used to be. And that's the cool thing about science, is that we continue to question, hypothesize, test, and we change our mind at the end if we were indeed wrong. That's the fun part about science, is we're always questioning, we're not stuck in our ways. So I find that really interesting actually, that historically we thought one thing and now we know something else. And hey, I'm also very open to being corrected if new evidence comes out. To me that's exciting that we're continuing to move forward in science and in evidence-based medicine. As for mental health, it's a really difficult link to make because there is such a significant proportion of the population who will have a mental health condition like anxiety or depression. As I've already established, up to 70% of us also have an empty HFR gene polymorphism. So it's really hard to know if it's caused, correlated or just coincidence. Looking at it backwards, however, if you assume that it is an MTHFR gene polymorphism that predisposes or worsens anxiety and depression, surely treating it with folate or vitamin B6 and other B vitamins would then be more of a good treatment and cure, I suppose, for these conditions. Studies have been done doing this and unfortunately there's just not a good link there, which is really a shame because I wish that we could treat anxiety and depression with B6. Would be fantastic but unfortunately we just can't. The study I'm alluding to actually looked at people with major depressive disorder who definitely did have the 677C to T or, yeah C to T polymorphism so you know that they really really tried to find a link and they just it wasn't really 
any evidence that treating them with folate made any difference to their symptoms. So overall, there is insufficient evidence to say that testing for the MTHFR or mother effigene polymorphisms makes any difference in your day-to-day -day cares. We know that most of us have a mutation, that using extra folate doesn't really improve outcomes when it comes to mental health, cardiovascular disease, but regardless of your mother effigene, I guess, status, if you are trying to fall pregnant or develop a fetus, sounds weird, then you should have 400 micrograms of folate regardless. The only thing that would change that is if you are on medications that inhibit folate metabolism, such as different anti-epileptics, in which case you're up to five milligrams. But of course, I'm just a random doctor on the internet. I'm not your doctor. Please talk to your own doctor about your individual needs. So why don't I order the MTHFR gene? Because it doesn't change what I do. And I don't want you to spend money on a test that doesn't change what I do. I am again very happy as new evidence comes out to change my mind but I'm very much focused on evidence-based medicine. And I'm, again, I'm happy to be wrong. I just want to be proven wrong. So, one last thing. Your alternative health practitioners here in Australia can actually order the test for you. So just keep that in mind. I will then, of course, make note of it if you come and tell me you've got a mutation. However, again, I don't think it's gonna change anything that we do together. So. Save your money, save your time, but of course, if you're interested and you, it would make you feel better knowing, I'm not going to stop you, that's fine. I'm just not going to order it. <laughs> so that's it guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, leave me suggestions for what you want to see next. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll catch you later. Bye.